Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, then please press that like and the subscribe button. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build your own gem for Ruby. And the reason why I'm building a gem is because usually in these videos, uh, the first step is adding device for users. But then I usually want to do some styling to make all the pages like the sign in and the sign up page look pretty with Tailwind. But devise by default, it just gives you a really basic, ugly uh, page for that. So that's why in this video, I'm going to be building pretty pages for sign in, sign up with Tailwind CSS for devise. And then I'm packaging it up into a gem so that anybody can now use this. And I think a lot of people find it useful and it saves a lot of time uh, for starting these new apps with Tailwind. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Creating a gem is actually very easy. So all we need to do is create a folder to store the gem. So first I'm gonna open up the code in Visual Studio Code Editor. And I'm gonna go and create a new folder for the gem. And for us, it's gonna be a gem uh, to add styling for device with Tailwind CSS. So I'll create that new folder. And then inside of the folder, we're just gonna need a gem spec file, which would be the name of our gem, dot gem spec. So for us, we can call it tailwind device dot gem spec. And then inside of here, you add everything to describe the gem, like the name and the version and a few other things. So this is straight from the Ruby gem documentation. Uh, they have an example one so if i just change this to be the name of our gem so it's going to create pretty sign in views well, sign in sign up views for device and then this would be probably a more detailed description Here we'll put our name. I'll just put the name of our channel for for this. Email. This is my real email, by the way. Okay, and then the next part is the files. So this is the actual like Ruby code that we're going to be using for the gem that we include. So you see that's in a lib folder and then it's just a Ruby file. So that's kind of what they expect, but we can change this to the name of our file. So I'll just call it tailwind device. And we're gonna have to create that lib folder. Inside of there, we add our file and add the .rb extension to make it Ruby. And inside this file, we can create a class which will match the name of the file. And then you just put a method that you want to use from the gem. Create views. Although for us, uh, we're not really going to do it like this because we're probably going to make a custom generator. But we can still test this out real quick. So we want to test this gem inside of our custom app. Uh, first, we're going to have to push it to GitHub. So I can go into the console and then I'm going to want to CD back into our app. I didn't know I called it all caps. <laughs> and I'm going to, oh, it doesn't have Git really in here. Uh, so what I do to push my GitHub repositories is first I go to GitHub. So if you don't have a GitHub account, go and set it up. It gets really useful for storing your repositories. And then I click on the new repo button and I'll just put the name in here. All 
all right, create repo. And then you just copy the one at the top. I didn't know. Oh, I guess the git init command, that's the one that makes it know about git. Anyways, that still didn't push the code though. So we need to do git add dot to add the rest of the files. Then we can add our commit. This is gonna be my first commit. And then push that code. So now if we go back to GitHub and we reload, we'll see that we have all the code for our gem. And then if we're gonna use this in our app, we just take the, the URL up here and then we go and put it in the app. We don't have app yet, so I'm gonna just create a uh, test app. I'm not really going to do anything. Or yeah, I'm going to use the, I'm going to pass in dash C and specify Tailwind as the framework because that's how I'm going to test it. So I guess that's the only option I'm going to pass in for this one. Now I'm going to enter the command and we'll create the test app. And then once that's set up, we can go and open that up and test out our gem. Now that the app has finished generating, we can CD into that name. I called it test device gem. We can go in here and let's just start the server with bin slash dev. See if it's working. So we can go and open up the browser, go to localhost 3000. There we go. We see the Rails logo, everything's on track. So to test the gem, I'm actually gonna, we'll stop the server and I'm gonna open up the code real quick. So we go into VS Code, I'm gonna do a new window and I'll open that folder that we just created. Okay, I got confused because I named it Test Device Gem. Okay, so Test Device Gem is actually the Rails app. So open that. Now inside of here, I'm gonna open the gem file and I'm just going to add that gem that we called it, tailwind underscore device. And then we're going to have it pull from GitHub. So you can put git and then add the URL of the GitHub repo. And you can also specify a branch. So I'll just specify the main branch. That's the default branch that all of the code gets pushed to. Uh, now we go back to the console and we can run bundle and it'll try to fetch that gem. So it looks like it's fetching it and everything got installed correctly. So to test it out, we can go to the terminal. And now remember that class that we created, Tailwind Device? We should be able to access it now inside of this app. I can say the Tailwind Device and as you can see, we have the class. And just like that, I can uh, call any method from this class from the gem inside of our Rails app. Now that we've got it tested, we have a working gem. We need to add our functionality where it's going to be able to generate the device views for us, but make them styled with Tailwind. So how it's gonna look is inside of our app, we're gonna want the user to do something like, instead of Rails device colon, or what is it? Rails device colon views, it would be Rails Tailwind, maybe even, yeah, just like this, Rails Tailwind Device colon views. Just as simple as that. So, how do we do something like this? Well, the first step is adding a custom generator. So the first thing we need to do to create our custom generator is we need to add the dependencies for Rails. So in our Tailwind Device.gem spec file, we need to add these three dependencies. So two development dependencies for Rail Ties and Thor and then one regular dependency for Rails. So we can add that. And then I'm using version six as the oldest that we're supporting, uh, just because that's the that's the latest one that's still kind of supported in the Rails community, but eventually the support will fade. So we could block it off at seven. I just think that on six, it's still similar enough. Although, with our forms, we, we might actually end up having some turbo stuff, but that's okay. 
Uh, people in, in Rails 6 actually use Turbo too. So next step to set up the generator is we can go into the lib folder and let's take that Tailwind Devise class and we'll rename it to Tailwind Devise Generator. And then we'll have to fix the class. But if we go inside of here, uh, we're actually gonna need to, at the top, require Rails Generator Space. So we can get all the methods that we need. And then we're gonna have this class inherit from Rails Generator Space. And then we need to add a source root. So this knows where the root of, where it's gonna look for the templates. So what that means is we're gonna end up creating a new folder in lib called templates. We're going to put this uh, for the generator and then we're gonna put a description of what the generator does. So this generator adds the device views styled with talent CSS. And then we just put the name of the method that we want to have. So for us, I'll put views. Then we're gonna have a template, which really for us, I mean, for us, we're gonna need to add a whole folder. So after we have these two additions set up, the next thing we're gonna do is create a new method. So we're gonna call views. And then inside of here, we can add this command directory, which will copy from our template directory, all the files into the Rails app. So we're gonna target app slash views. Well, actually, we're gonna need to create a new uh, folder called device. So we can use file utils for this. Make their P for device folder. And let's file dot directory device folder and device folder is going to be a variable. We're going to define as file dir name rails root slash view slash device and actually if there's already device folder um maybe we'll just create it anyways because even if they already had device set up and they run ours we want it to override it so i'm pretty sure will it override Okay, looks like we can't do that. What we can do is we can check with this. So we'll say if file.directory device folder. So this is if device folder is already existing. We're gonna use this method to remove it. Just as simple as that. And we don't need to check on here. So if you look at what this code does, it defines a variable with a directory to the device folder. Then it removes the device folder if it already exists. And the next thing, it just creates a new folder. Then we're gonna take this, we're gonna take our internal device folder and we're gonna copy it into this app views device. Actually, we might wanna... Yeah, the question is, do we need Rails root? <laughs> Probably. I think we would just use device folder. So instead of this string, pass device folder. But this one's gonna target device. So how we're gonna get this is it's gonna also be nested in templates in the lib folder. So we create a new folder called templates first, and then we create a folder called device. But actually what we're gonna need is uh, the device views. One thing I didn't realize about the gem class 
uh, for a generator. So how it works is it creates the name based off the name of the class. So for us, we have a, a file called Tailwind Device Generator. And then the class is Tailwind Device Generator. So this would create a command like Rails G Tailwind Device. And then when you run that, it actually just runs all the methods on the class. So it doesn't matter what we call this method. This could just be like actually more explanatory. We could say copy device folder into app or copy, you know, just more explanatory. And any method that you have in this class is gonna run when you do this. And if we wanted to have a colon, I think we just have to namespace it. So we could do a module tailwind device and then a class views generator which also means we need to move this into a tailwind device folder and rename the file we can make a new folder called tailwind device drop our generator in and then rename it to a views generator views generator and then this is also not going to work anymore the source root because expanding path templates, I think it's trying to look in its own directory. So let's move templates into the Tailwind device inside of that class. And let's see if this works. Or wait, <laughs> why is there two now? Oh! I don't know. Okay, maybe I'm maybe that wasn't. Let's try to move it again. Templates folder needs to go into Tailwind device. But for some reason it doesn't want to. There we go. Now we have it in there. Templates. Although there's nothing inside of templates now. Oh. I think I did that command wrong. So I found out the reason why our generator wasn't showing up and it was a typo. So see how the, in the lib folder, I just have it, I have a Tailwind device folder. Well, guess what? If you want to add a custom generator, you need to nest it in a generator folder. And that's what I forgot. So actually in lib, we should have created a folder called generators and then had Tailwind device inside of there. That's the only part we were missing. So now that we did that, uh, let's add that to GitHub. Yeah, we're putting our generator in the right spot that it was supposed to be. Then let's go back to our test app. Let's do the same process of deleting the gem file lock and then reinstalling the gems. And now we should have everything how we want it. So if we run well, let's just check it out. Rails G help. It's kind of silly that I was struggling. But yeah, now we see we have our custom gem and we have tailwind device colon views. So now it's as easy enough as saying Rails G tailwind device colon views. Oh, directory not empty. App slash views. Remove dir. Ooh, so I guess remove dir. Right here, remove dir. Or we're trying to remove the device folder. It breaks if there's files inside of it. So rm dir. It looks like the way that we fix it is by doing rm rf, which is more risky because we delete everything inside of the folder. So make sure you're targeting uh, the correct thing, like the device folder. And also we wanna tell people when they use our gem that we're gonna delete their current device folder uh, because they might get mad about that. Uh, we don't know how they're gonna be. So we might wanna change this up in the future, depending on how we wanna do it. We might use a custom folder name, like tailwind underscore device. I just need to look in how we can uh, tell device to look in the right place. It's probably easy. It's probably like something in the initializers or something. 
can look real quick. But I want to get to the next part of styling the device code. Yeah, we push this. Uh, let's do the same thing. RM gem file dot lock. Want to install again. Now, if we run that same command, Rails G Tailwind device views. Did we not push the code? We need to push this code, which is change rmdir to rmrf because we want to be able to delete all the files inside. Push that, then do the same process again. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is kind of repetitive, but uh, I've only created a few gems using generators. So I'm still kind of new, but I really wanted to get this video out. Okay, so now we have the gem. We can do Rails G and then pass in Tailwind Device colon views. And just like that, it added the device views. Then if we want to do our Rails D device user and just test this out. Oh, we have to migrate the database real quick. Rails db migrate. And let's start the server and let's check that out. If we open up the browser, go to localhost 3000. Now we can change the URL and go to slash user slash sign in. And we see I have, we have our sign in page, uh, which actually I thought we had the, I thought we added that message to say, hello, YouTube. I might've forgot to do that. No, we did. We have hello YouTube. So that should have shown up. That really should have shown up there. Oh, we do have the views. Oh, what? Why did it put this in the views? So it looks like we had another typo. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of annoying, but uh, we have to go fix this. Let's go back into uh, the gem code go into the views generator. Oh, this is weird. I mean, I tried this, I, I gave it device folder. I'm so confused. It looks like we gave it the right thing. But then it just plopped it in the views folder instead of putting it in the device namespace. That doesn't make any sense. Cause if you see what device folder is, it's this. And I wonder if, uh, I wonder if this like actually creates an instance or something. And because we deleted it, then we can't use it. I just want to do something like this, like the device folder path. Although it might not work the same. I don't even know at this point. I'm going to test that out.
All right. It looks like it's kind of hard to tell. Okay, yeah, it looks like it actually put it in the device folder this time. So the difference in the code being, I think the file dir name is actually requires a file to exist. And when we removed it, then we lost the reference to this. So we actually just need to use the device folder path. Now, one question I have is do we need dir name? Or can we pass rmrf the path instead? Uh, this works, so I might just leave it like this. And then, like I said, for the for the name of the method, it really doesn't matter what you call it. So let's just rename this to copy device tailwind files to app. That's what it's doing. And then inside of here, it just copies everything in this device folder into the app. Now, if we want to start styling it, I think what I'll do is I'll style it on the test app because we already have everything right here. Oh, and then we see this, uh, the message, hello YouTube, because we got our custom device views. So yeah, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to style it inside of this test app, and then I'm going to copy those back into our gem, and then we'll be good to go. So there's a few pages that we're going to mess with. We're going to have the user sign in, the user what is it? registration, I forget them all. Start with the sign in. Oh, sign up. Uh, there's also forgot password. And then after you sign in, there's an edit page. So let's start with the sign in page. Uh, so we're not going to edit in the gem. We're going to actually edit it inside of our Rails app that we're testing with. So it's going to use device new. And let's just start styling this. So I'll probably just add a div that wraps the whole thing. Do min height 100 view width or view height and the div. And then we're going to put another kind of like a centered modal in the center. So here we can give it a max width, add some margin. And I want to either do a background or a border or a mix of both. Let's do border for now, Let's see how it looks. I'll add some rounded. Let's make this login button a little bit bigger, but not too big. Let's go see so far. User sign in. Oh, it honestly, looks like device or it looks like Tailwind's not even set up correctly. It's kind of weird because we're using bin dev. Just does not look like Tailwind set up. It's definitely not set up. Oh, <laughs> we're missing the layouts folder inside of here. So I, I think that's something that our gem did on accident is we deleted the layouts folder. That's not good. At this point, I might have to just create a new test app. So let's delete the rails. Let's delete this one. And let's just do a new one. And we'll pass the tailwind option to dash C. I need that GitHub URL again. Oh, and by the way, all of the repos for the videos I make, you can find on my GitHub account. And feel free to download this. Okay, now we've generated the app. You can see the end. Do bin slash dev. Actually, I'm going to add device 
do bundle add device Rails G device Oops, on, install and then Rails G device user and we'll migrate to database. So now we have device, now I'm gonna add my custom gem. Uh, so if we open the code, let's go to the gem file. Add that um, code and then we'll specify a git a branch of main. Then we can go back into the terminal and run bundle. Now we've done that, let's see if this works by doing our command rails g to uh, tailwind vise colon views. And hopefully now it won't delete the layout. Oh, I'm not positive. Oh no, so we go into our app. It added the device folder, but it deleted the layouts folder. Which I honestly have no idea, but that's really bad. Uh, let's go back into our code for the gem. Let's try to figure out why is it deleting that. The file utils RMRF. Something with that, it's definitely why it's deleting it. File dir name. Oh, this is getting. This code is just. I think it's getting the main, the top directory. So no, we can't do that. Thing is, we just need to delete it if it already exists. And we can just straight up say rmrf device folder path and don't do any of the checks or anything like we were doing. Let's add that code. Fix the generator. Push it again. Just the sad thing is that we have to go and create the new gem because Unless we want to redo the layout from scratch. We could do that too. I'm just going to do the new generator to make this. I don't actually know if this is easier because it kind of takes a while to generate the app. But we'll do this. Okay, now that we created the app, I'm going to CD in. And I'll do that same process of adding device so we added device we created the user model now I want to add my gem let's open the code go to the gem file to on device Oh, we need to grab that URL again. Then we go to console, run bundle to install a gem. And then we can type Rails G Tailwind device colon views. That generated the views. Let's go check out what that did. So inside of our app, we go to the app views. Perfect. We still have the layouts folder, but now we have the device folder and it has all of our new views inside of it. So now we get to the part where I'm gonna actually style it. So let's start the server and let's open user sign in. And we see our hello YouTube. Everything set up, but let's get to styling it now. So one thing we need to think about though is usually there's this padding on it. So we might not want to do anything with view width, but that's fine. We can just do width 100. So let's go into sessions new.
Uh, we can delete the YouTube part. And then let's go wrap this in a div. Do min height 100 view height. And then we'll do a secondary div, which will be uh, that kind of background. We're doing max width and then some margin on the sides to center it. I'll give it a border okay so just like that we can even make it rounded and then if I want to center the content in the center let's go flex flex call item center and we could even do some padding py6 I don't really like the border instead of that let's do a shadow like a box shadow yeah that looks a little bit better and then we could do a background color just some sort of little light color to stick out from the background <clears throat> and now let's dial some of the fields so for the login i want to make this a little bit bigger and maybe add some more padding And then we can style these fields. Uh, really would be nice if I could do a side view so I don't have to keep going back. Just so you can see how I'm live styling it. Oh, we don't have hotwire live reload. So that allows us to for it to auto reload when we save the files. So I'm gonna do that because it's pretty cool. Bundle add hotwire live reload. Whoops. Okay, and then we have to do Rails G check. I forget what it's called. Oh, live reload enable. Oh, there's no underscore. So just like that, we set up live reload. And now when we edit some styling on in our code it'll automatically update on the left which is actually kind of nice for this youtube video uh, although i just did it and it didn't update maybe we need to restart the server so yeah change bg grade 200 i didn't see it happen <laughs> Let's go in the gym. I know there is some configuration. Oh, we forgot the installer. Let's go back and we have to do the Rails live reload colon install. I guess that does some important stuff. Okay, now we can style it how we want. And it'll auto update on the side. It's actually really nice for this. So I think I want the the fields to kind of go full width. So I'm not sure. I think that's on the flex call item center. Which I do want it centered, but I, I don't want to have to be pressuring them to be really like center like that. So let's just do center on the login link center here and then we can center these in a different way why don't we do our own div and we can do width three quarters and max auto or we could have done that with in the flex call too 
And let's make our fields take up full width, but I think we actually have to make uh, the text field itself full width. Just like how I did here. And then we might not even need width full on the fields. Yeah, we don't. So for styling this, it really depends how you want your sign-in pages styled. And there's probably some easy components we could look up to. Yeah, styling and signing pages is just kind of a boring thing where we know what we want them to look like, but actually getting there is kind of painful. Also, none of these component packs look that good. I feel like on large screen, well, I think max width XL is actually good for all the screens. We're getting somewhere with the fields. Really, we just need something that works well, and it has a bit of, a little bit more styling than the basic styling because we can always override it. Like, that's probably the whole point of this. It just gets you a, a jump start, and then you can custom style it however you want. One thing is making the text bigger because for mobile apps too you want you want to be able to read it I think the brakes are just doing too much margin for my styling, for my taste. Email, password, remember me. I don't really know what else we could do for remember me. We could add a custom icon, but that would require some JavaScript. Which people would like it, but let's leave that alone. Also, is remember me usually... Is that usually on top before the login button? I don't know, but I definitely want the login button to have some better styling. So let's just do a blue login button. Something like that. I'll add that cursor pointer so the cursor looks correct. We can add some hover style. Maybe the background gets a little darker. And the text could also change. Something like that. And then for sign up, we could also style that. But that's over in the shared links. So we're gonna have to pop out of here, go in the shared links. And for shared links, I feel like these could all be centered. Just for the kind of style that we're going for. So I mean, it looks like all this is doing is really generating the links. We might not want to add the style in shared links. We might just want to add a wrapper. Let's say flex call item center. Okay, just something like that. Although I don't know why I added so much padding now. I think there's something with breaks and flex. Oh yeah. No, that doesn't make sense. Why do the why do the breaks get more exaggerated when you use flex? I know it's gonna it's gonna show up in the positioning. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, if we go into links, we'll see there's a ton of breaks, which is now kind of just adding too much spacing. Instead of sign up though, I wanted to do something like I already have an account. Oh wait. No, I'm doing this backwards. Here, 
create one now. That's kind of a lot of text. No account, create one now. You can have that link and then forgot your password down here. So actually, this is not bad. This login page right here, I'm kind of happy with it. And we were able to do that pretty quick. And if I could have something like this when I start off, it's a lot nicer for my YouTube videos. That's for sure. So let's get to the next one. The create, create one now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really like that text. How about create an account now? Say like new here. Create an account now. There you go. I like that. Click on this. Now, ooh, we're back to the ugly page. So, I do want it to look just like the sign-in page, just so it's not confusing. So we can copy the top two divs. Go over to the registrations folder. Drop it in around the top. And then wrap all of this code inside of the divs. Then we'll add the class to the h2 and i'm just kind of like bring all the styling in the same the way that we did it we were wrapped all this code in this uh, for the center content and we added the styling around the shared links We can make the sign up link pretty. So we're halfway there. Now we just need to get all the styling for the fields. So for that, we just added some margin. Also on the label. And then, did we get rid of the breaks or did we leave them? I think we left the breaks too. Yeah, so this looks the same. Well, it is definitely pretty boring with the... This background color doesn't look right. I feel like instead of gray, it should actually be lighter. BG gray 50. That kind of looks good. BG gray 50, and then we can also style, forget your password because this one's really ugly too. Let's grab those top two divs because these top two divs is basically like the code that's setting up that nice modal style and we'll go over to passwords new wrap all of this code as you saw i only added I only styled really like this the sign-in page and I'm copying over to the rest of the pages just because I want to have them match. Alright, we're almost done with this. Just 
add this and then perfect we have forgot your password page uh, everything's looking good so let's go and create our first account sign up so we're on this page now let's go to users edit because i know that this is one that i want to style So that would require us to go to uh, registrations edit and think about this one i mean we could do a basic uh, styling page although for me usually the user's edit is is more like a settings page more than a modal page so the question is do we want it to be centered or do we want to have things uh, on the left hand side it doesn't really matter though honestly Probably just start by uh, trying to bring the same styling from the sign-in page and the registration over to the edit. For me, edit's usually the settings page. Well, in most apps, that's what it is. So we're gonna wrap in here. And yeah, there's just kind of so much going on now. But we can start uh, Styling this a little bit better. So I wanted to wrap the form, but I also wanted to wrap the rest of these links. So I think I wanted to. bottom four okay and then the link the styling for the link and we just want the styling for those fields current password okay it's a little bit better although there's still some questionable margin. I wonder if that's because of a break or what. Six character minimum. Maybe it's just normal. It just kind of looks weird with the, like, why is six character minimum on the bottom? If minimum password length. I don't really know where else it would be. I guess that's fine. And then cancel my account. Unhappy, cancel my account. Okay, that's kind of confusing. We can add some styling to that. really want to have some, some styling between this cancel my account although this kind of looks like you would click that that's why it's kind of weird unhappy cancel my account this should probably all be on one line So my account should probably have some more obvious styling. Cancel my account, and then there's the back button. At this point, I feel like the back button should be higher, just so we kind of like put the cancel on my account out of the way.
attack button definitely too big. My back actually doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, let's see, we have sign in. We're already signed in. We have users edit. Let's just cancel my account so I can sign out. And I know there's passwords slash new. I just want to make sure that I get all of the different pages. So let's look and see what we have. We have passwords new and we pass it passwords edit, which is the change your password link. Hmm. But to test this out, we need to, and when there's also unlocks, resend unlock instructions. And they're shared. You know, I don't usually use those for the videos, but I think I'm gonna call it at, at this for this video. Because we styled the basic uh, device views right and if any of you who are watching feel inspired to help contribute to this gem go check out the source code and please add a pull request or just fork it and make your own one i really don't care i just i'm glad that you guys watched and you saw how to do this that's the whole point i want you to know how to create a gem and to create your own device generator so just like that i'm gonna call it at this Oh, 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 here's the last part. We have all that custom styled code, right? Now we need to go put it into our gem. Because if you remember, we were styling it inside of a test app and we still need to go and put it back into our app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the existing device folder in the gem. And I'm just gonna simply drag the device folder from our test app right here. and drop it right in the templates folder. And just like that. Get add style the device views with talent. Then we'll get push. And then from here, really the last step is just trying to release this. So if you go to go to rubygems.org this is where they have all of the different ruby gems that are possible to add when you do something like bundle add so in here i don't think there's one for tailwind device yet so we want ours to get here and pop up so what we do inside of this app we say gem build and then we pass it gem spec Or do we just say gem build in the folder? Or no, we do gem build in the name. No, you do the do the gem spec. Gem build tailwind device dot gem spec. And it's saying this are not files. No, don't tell me I did something wrong. saying lib slash this is not files. Can we just do lib all? Lib are not files? What? I'm so confused. Lib are not files.
So I got the gem build to work by changing the way that we're doing the files from an array like this to dir.glob. And for some reason that worked. So I was able to gem build it. And then I pushed this compiled gem. Now if you go to rubygems.org, you can search for our Tailwind Devise gem. And we see that right here we have it public on the Ruby Gem site. So that's why I went over here and I deleted that app and I'm just creating a new one to test with. So if I CD into here, and then first we'll add device. So we'll bundle add device. Rails G device colon install. Rails G device user. All right, and then the last step would be Oh, adding our gem. Bundle add tailwind underscore device. And then running rails tailwind device colon views. <sighs> and it didn't work. This is crazy. We really should have tested it before we pushed. It was there, something. Oh, it's a generator. Rails G to when device views, of course. So it did work. Now if we just migrate the database and we restart the server, then we can open up the browser, go to localhost 3000, go to user sign-in. Just like that, we have pretty device sign-in right from the start. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, you find this gem cool, go install it, try it out on your own system, and if you want to uh, contribute to the gem, the GitHub is going to be in the description of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and it is pretty uh, informational, now you know how to create a gem, and use a gem to add files to somebody's app, like view files, templates, anything you can do with that generator. Yeah, hope you guys have a good one.